Hey everybody, and welcome to another video. So before I want to make a fourth hosting tutorial, I quickly want to do a step back and answer the most asked questions on the three tutorials that I have out at the moment. So look in the video description, there are all the questions or problems, topics, whatever you want to call it, that I'm going to be covering in this video. If your problem is not there and you're still stuck, leave me a comment and I'll try to help you over there. So without any further ado, these are the 15 most asked questions on my three tutorials. Good luck and I hope I can help you in this video. So question number one, does this server thing always have to be running? Yes, this is kind of the heartbeat of your server. So if it's not running, people cannot connect to it. And if they connect to your server, that black screen is basically what they are connecting to. So if you want to close down your, your computer and still have the server running, it needs to be running somewhere else. So you need to have a different computer, a laptop, if it has good specs maybe, or you're running a small server or just a test server, whatever, could work. You're gonna ask a friend that has a computer that could be running um, 24 seven and can host it. Or otherwise there are always companies that are willing to take your money to host a server for you. So you just go to Google or whatever search engine you use, probably Google, um, type in rent a Rust server or server hosting, whatever, and you will find a match for someone who is willing to host your Rust server. Just look at the location of the server, because if you live in Australia and you're gonna rent a server in Amsterdam, that's not gonna be fun for you. So just make sure the server is close to where you live, and then that way you and probably your friends and people around your area can join that server if it's a public server. Question number two, my Rust admin won't connect. So it could be several things. You could be typing something wrong over here. Make sure you got web archon connected. But I think the main problem is that people are not saving their configuration. It doesn't really connect from what's in this screen. It connects to what is saved in the configuration. I'll show you what I mean. This is my server. I can connect to it. So you can see it says connected here, Ted, vanilla, blah, 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 blah. When I disconnect and I change this IP address to a six, which is clearly wrong, I can still connect to it as you can see. But when I disconnect and save it, now I save the seven to the six, I cannot connect anymore. So make sure you have everything set up correctly here. Web Archon is connected, is selected. Make sure you save your configuration to whatever. So it will say new configuration, type your stuff, click save, give it a name, done. And then if everything is, connect, if everything is correct, you should be able to connect. I hope that fixes your problem. Um, I've also heard people having problems with uh, firewalls or antivirus blocking it and they cannot even open it. So you will have to go a different route. You have to go port forwarding and use something like um, archon.io, which is a web-based uh, archon tool basically. And I will show you how to use that in an upcoming video. Um, but if you, this should for most people fix the problem if it's already opening, etc. I just think that's the problem that most people are having. So if it doesn't and you find a fix or something else, leave me a comment. Let's go on. So question number three, my server won't show up in the list. That basically means you didn't port forward right. If you run your server and everything is port forwarded, you will automatically be added to the list. It might take a little bit for your server to show up. The more popular your server is and the more people connect to it, the higher up you will come eventually in the server. And also the longer your server has been talking or connecting with the Rust main server, whatever you want to call it. So as, as long, the longer your server has been running and the popular it is, the quicker it will come up in the server list. But if you did everything right, you port forward it correctly, it should add itself. You don't have to send them an email, do anything. It will just work automatically. It can take a little bit, two, three minutes the first time for it to show up and just search for it. If it doesn't show up, you didn't port forward correctly and you will also see that your friends cannot connect. So that's just the problem. If it doesn't show up, look at my third tutorial and go port forward and then it should work. Question number four, how do my friends join the server? So there are two ways, or if you port forwarded everything correctly, otherwise they cannot even join. You just, they just search your name, whatever, in the community or the modded server, and then they join through that. Or you go to whatismyip.com and it shows you your IP. You give them that IP and then they do client.connect, your IP, and then the port or port. So just let them join through the browser list. That's the easiest way. Um, 
I, I think people are asking this question because they don't show up in the browser list and they want their friends to join. It just means you need to port forward, otherwise they can't join and you won't show up in the list like I explained in the other one. Question number five, how do I make myself admin? So you're going to click shift tab when you're in game to get your Steam overlay and click on view friends and then click on your picture and this will open up your profile or go to your profile differently. And then in the link, it will say your Steam ID in the end or at the end of the link. So you're going to copy that, then go to the black screen. So you're going to type owner ID, then a space, then the ID and then a name. So for me, it's going to be Ted. It doesn't have to be the name of the player or something. And it says edit owner, Ted, Steam ID, blah, 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 blah. And then your owner, that's it. And then you can also do that for your friends. That way they are owner, easy peasy. Question number six, why do I need to keep giving myself admin? So every time you restart the server, some people told me they need to give themselves admin again. That's because you need to save your admin uh, powers, whatever the, the settings to your CFG. So what you're going to do, you go to the black screen or if you're already admin, you can just do it through F1 and you do server dot write CFG. And in the server, it will say, oh, it says here config saved and it will also tell you config saved so now when you restart the server um, you don't have to keep giving yourself and your friends admin because it's basically saved to the config so every time you make someone admin or remove something someone from the list you need to do that again question number seven how do I fly so if you type no clip in F1 you can fly and then if you type no clip again, oh, if you can actually type it, no clip, what? no clip, thank you. <laughs> it will actually stop flying. That's a little bit annoying. So what you can do is type bind and then a key. So I do L and then no clip. And then when you press, oh, when you press L, you fly. When you press L again, you stop. You get to drift when you fly around you can use WASD to fly around you can use shift to go faster you can use space to go up and you can use control to go slower so when you want to get those nice flying shots of stuff use control that's it then press L again to stop question number eight how do I give myself stuff very easy press F1 go to items at the top and then you got all your categories of stuff just go through them, search for whatever you want. Um, click on it to get one of it. Click on the 10 to get, uh, click on 100 to get 100 and click on the 1K to get a thousand. That's basically it. Question number nine, how do I delete stuff? Very easy, you look at something, an entity like a tree, uh, a rock, uh, a building part, something. And you go into your console and you type ENT space kill for entity space kill and then you can basically do the same thing as the other one so you can do bind and then a key i do k for kill and then ent space kill so every time now i press k it's going to run the kill command so when i look at something and i just press k it deletes it and that's also when i'm building stuff when i'm building stuff and i make a mistake and just really quickly delete stuff and then make my changes and I don't have to go with the hammer or place a tool cupboard etc so that's also when you're testing stuff or making builds it's really easy to bind it to K I have it bind to my mouse um, really good really good question number 10 how do I choose a map so you're going to go to playrust.io and go to go to map gallery you choose a map whatever you want and it says the size is, I said it here to a thousand, so all the thousands is the size. And then after the slash, it's the seed. And in your startup batch, and then in your server startup, it will say procedural map, server seed, take the one after the slash, and then server world size, 6,000, take the one before the slash. So if you then run the batch file with those settings, it will then choose that map and run it. Done. <coughs> Question number 11. How do I run a custom map? So this is your startup batch 
and it says here server level procedural map server seed server size you're going to delete that all and you're going to add plus level url and then between quotes the link or the location of the map so, so if you want your friends to be able to join you will need to upload your map somewhere if it's really small you can maybe use discord or otherwise use dropbox or a different file host where you can link directly to the map file there cannot be a download button or something so i use dropbox if you use dropbox there's going to be if you copy the link there's going to be a zero at the end change that to a one then your map will work if you just want to test it locally you could also just put in here my map that map or the location of the map whatever and that way you can just test it locally but you knew you'll have to upload it somewhere if you want your friends to be able to join because their client can then from that link download the map file and then generate generate something that people can play on so upload it to dropbox do remove the whole procedural map part and put in plus level url then between quotes the link or the location if it's locally and then it should work so if you're renting a server or something that's how you run a custom map on a rented server question number 12 my router isn't on the list I'm talking about portforward.com what do i do so not being able to port forward and not being able to find a guide is annoying but if you look at my tutorial i give all the information you need so what you need to do is you need to find out how to log into your router um, by googling it or whatever or looking for default passwords etc and then apply the information that i gave you what to port forward what protocols to use look at my video if you don't know what i'm talking about and then port forward it look up if you show up in the list if you do you did a great job and you're done um, also a great a, a tip i can give you is sometimes internet server providers make a deal with a certain router uh, or modem uh, manufacturer and they put their brand on it what i would then recommend is go to your router or modem look for the model type if you google that model type you might find a different manufacturer than what it says on there um, with the same model type and then you might be able to find information about that um, that's basically all i can do there are too many routers etc etc i already repeated myself so many times so unless those two tips there's not much i can do for you sorry you probably have to rent a server if you don't want to have any port performance problems if it doesn't keep if it doesn't work that's the only way to go question number 13 how do i update my server so you downloaded the, the server because it's running and you want to update it so the way you downloaded the server is actually how you update it so you got the batch file that says login anonymous force install and then the directory of your map and then uh, the, the map the folder uh, directory of your folder and then it says what app you want to update um and it's in this case 258550 and that is basically the rust server files and this is in your steam cmd folder right here for me steam cmd and there's the batch file and this is what is in there if you need to copy it just change this to your um, location of your server and then make it a batch file by going to save save as update dot bat save it and that way um, it will check if there's an update will download it make sure your server isn't running that will also uninstall oxide so if you have any plugins etc back those up first and the config files for them if you don't want to redo it every time there's a update every month that's how you update it good luck have fun question number 14 how do i rent a server so i already quickly touched on that in the other one if you go to google and just type in rust server hosting um, you'll get some ads first and then it says game hosting and gameservers.com survival servers rust servers fragnet notecraft gtx whatever there are a lot of options and some of them talk about slots um 35 cents per slot a slot is basically every one slot is one person that can be on your server so if you want a 50 person slot the bigger you want the server the more you'll pay per month um just look for what they are offering and i the only one i can recommend you because i used it is gameservers.com i haven't tried any other ones so they might be really bad but the performance was good enough for what i was doing with was a 50 slot server so 50 people max server and um only when we were running like events with th three helicopters flying around and stuff we were really seeing the lag um otherwise it was working pre uh, perfect so that's the one i can recommend the service was pretty good i had some problems in the beginning with my server not showing up they fixed it within 12 hours i think 
which sounds really long but i'm already happy, happy they helped me so they fixed it they said sorry etc all good so um that's basically it the only tip i can give you is look at the location of the server if you look if you live in australia it makes no sense to um to rent a server in amsterdam or or something over here because you will have very bad connection so make sure whatever you rent is close to wherever you live or whatever purpose you want that's basically it look for what they offer look at the prices maybe they have some um maybe they have some offers at the moment look what is good what's a good deal for you at the moment also what you're looking for and that's it so question number 15 i get an error when trying to download these server files um that basically means you don't have enough room on your hard disk go into the steam cmd that i just showed update file change the location to a different hard disk if you have that or make sure you, you have enough room on your hard disk otherwise it will not download and it will give you the error zero zero or something um, when you try to download it it's about seven gigabytes six gigabytes or something big so make sure you have at least 10 free then you can download the full server and updates upcoming updates etc so make room or change the location to a different hard disk and then you should be golden that was really awkward <laughs> <laughs> okay that's i think the best way to end the video um <laughs> i hope that uh, i helped you out um as always thank you for watching leave me a comment like subscribe everything <laughs> peace thank you very much for watching click on the left thumbnail for my most recent upload or click on the right for a video that suits you best as always have a very nice day i'm out peace Ha <laughs> <laughs>